Hi, my name's David. I am a freelance television cameraman and director of photography. You can learn more about what I do on my website, wintersmediagroup.com. This is my fourth camera truck in 20 years. It's also my smallest. When I was a young assistant right out of school in Los Angeles, I was driving an old Buick that my grandmother gave to me. And uh, I was driving to a job with a 3BL RE3 35 mil camera package in the back seat. It was about 14 cases and I had a panic stop on the 10 freeway and one of the thousand foot magazine cases slid above the headrest and the corner hit me square in the back of the head and uh, split my head open. Fortunately, I didn't wreck, but uh, that was a wake up call to uh, not haul pokey bits and heavy items in the back seat of a personal vehicle. So ever since that experience, I've driven work trucks that have collision bulkheads or proper tie down cargo areas. And my goal was this was tiny footprint. I wanna be stealth. I wanna be able to avoid loading docks, park and visitor parking, park in compact car size spaces, have all of my gear hidden away in a method that uh, would be difficult to break in. Uh, no smash and grabs because there isn't any glass. It's got an aftermarket lock and alarm system. So even if a thief smashes one of the cab windows, they cannot gain entry into the rear doors via the cab. All right, enough talking. We'll jump into the tour here. So I'm equipped to run with a solo or with an assistant with everything that we carry on board. Right now I'm in my default configuration, which is a senior size mag liner on the passenger side. And uh, this van is designed so that uh, you can access everything in the cargo area without ever having to climb in the back via the three doors. So right now I've got a Aria Mira on board with a 17 to 120 lens. If we're running around and shooting multiple locations in a day, I have a touch and go plate on the cart so that the camera can stay built in the van and it's just a quick reach in and release to get the camera out and be up and framing a shot in about 30 seconds. When we're in mobile mode, usually run one or two tripods on the rear side of the magliner. I have some tripod hangers or they can just float loose in an upright position by the back door. And then I've got a eight foot trifold ramp so it's a very gradual incline. It's very easy for one person to roll a fully loaded cart in or out. Then moving on to the driver's side. I learned this from shooting pit crews at auto races uh, where they every week they drive to a new venue and all their tools, equipment, electronics, radios, everything rides in these custom locking mechanic style tool chests. So the higher quality tool chests like a Snap-on and for a brief while Craftsman was making some higher end carts, uh, the drawers are individually latching. So it's a locking mechanism to get the drawer open so you don't have to worry about turning a corner and having the cart, all the drawers open and the cart will flip over. So I carry basically everything I need to do, a B-roll job, scenics, interview job. I've gotten rid of all my Pelican and ATA cases and uh, interview light kit, audio, monitors, stands, basic rigging equipment, batteries and chargers. It's all on the cart. And then the top of the cart is a shelf area where I can set up uh, up to two 21 inch monitors and a single camera on a touch and go. I'll give you a real quick tour here. Top drawer has got two handheld daylight viewable monitors, a couple of headphones, uh, Paralynx SDI transmitter with two receivers. There's a second monitor back here. Cables, lens cleaning kit. Get uh, basic tools, mints, deodorant, snacks, bare essentials for a shoot. I always carry multiple spare tripod plates and numerous extra 3 8 and quarter inch tripod screws because each of these things if you've been around for more than a year you've had a shoot that gets put on hold because one of a screw or a plate is missing some led lights vct 14 plate extra q taps some more bicolor led lights 
I like these little lull stands. I use them for airline travel and then when I'm working with my little cart because uh, they have a nice wide base. They got a big enough footprint that you don't need C stands for anything that's going to go on a flimsy stand like this. Uh, it's stable without a, a sandbag. Uh, I've tried to get to the point where I don't have to carry sandbags or C stands or conventional flags and grip equipment on jobs. Audio, I've got enough to cover a basic two person interview two road lav mics um, i carry spiral lavs for each so i've got four or five i think i actually have six lavaliers on board hypercardioid mic for a boom shotgun mic for outdoors compact boom pole because it conveniently fits in the cart and again it's great for airline travel xlr cables and boom pole holders chargers um, isolation boxes for when i have to tie into a pa system a hum blocker for example uh, various windscreens rechargeable batteries you get the idea batteries so um, most jobs i don't have to run any stingers or require ac power we run all our lights monitors and cameras off of batteries and if we're going to be at a location all day, I might plug in a couple of battery chargers off-site to continually top off batteries. This is about one quarter of my gold mount inventory. In the bottom drawer is the catch-all. Got a few lightweight stingers, a little five-in-one reflector, spare screws. So if I got to rig a, like a GoPro on something, a railing or in a car, I've got some bits to do that. Spare BNC cables, clothes pins. Get this little forward area for some bigger lighting equipment. Right now I've got three American baby stands, three rise on board. And then uh, below the deck here, it's just a little storage area. I got some additional cable, a tarp for rain, tennis balls for pokey bits. And on the passenger side, air compressor, and I carry six wheels for, to make two rolling stands, heavy duty. So if I want to roll around a 21 inch monitor or a couple of sky panel or Gemini sized LED lights, same thing. I get a wide enough footprint with these, uh, similar to the kit stands that uh, I don't necessarily need a sandbag to make it safe. And behind the seats in the cab are various size photo style five in one reflectors. So I can silk bounce black solid and I can mount all of those as uh, an overhead or a vertical mode using conventional light stands or kit stands because again i don't want to carry c stands they're just too awkward in a small van so even when i'm doing a single camera job i try to always carry some kind of backup camera just in case i don't know the camera gets knocked over shorts out gets rained on so i don't want to ever be in a situation where we cannot roll so uh my current backup item is a little ronin gimbal with a black magic 6k pocket camera I just picked this rig up, very happy with it. I've only shot a couple of jobs. You can check out one of my previous videos where we compared the Amira to the Pocket 6K. And I'm feeling really good about using this as a supplemental B-roll cam and a second camera angle on interviews. It matches really well. And then I've got two 21 inch monitors at the moment, as well as a five inch on camera onboard monitor up top. And then I believe there's two, uh, yeah, two quad battery chargers on the top shelf of the cart and sometimes like for example let's say i'm doing a three camera job i might build all three cameras and have them clipped in on the touch and goes three across on my mag liner and shed all of the shipping cases so that way whenever i get to a location kind of the goal is to load in in one trip and everything's on carts we don't spend any time pulling cases off, making piles, building carts, restacking. Because so I start making a bunch of commotion like that. That's when people start asking for permits and why are you here and did security clear it? Well, what about this other department? And does so-and-so know what you're doing? Let's do a tech scout first to see if you really need to bring all your stuff in. It's like, nope, I'm out and in in one trip, one set of carts. Generally try to avoid doing the early morning walkthrough. I'll just, I'll walk in with my tool chest and all the stuff I need ready to work. And if I got to park a couple hundred yards away from the entrance, generally I'll just park and roll the cart across the parking lot instead of downloading, having someone watch my gear while I park. It just burns more time. 
Here's a rear view of the van, gives you an idea of the length of the eight foot ramp. The cargo area is six feet deep and I have room to carry my six foot slider. Can either ride under the mag liner or down the center lane. Can also load in my little mini jib in here. Or I've got two of the full size Gemini LEDs and wooden boxes. Or if I got multiple cameras to carry, I can just vertically stack cases at the back end here. All right, I'm gonna move on to some specific van build out items. Uh, these little cargo vans come from the factory with a vinyl floor and it's got like an insulation underneath it and it's really squishy. And the problem was when you roll a cart in, the wheels sink in and it divots and then uh, it's really difficult to get the cart out. And cases have the same problem. They sink in overnight and then uh, I threw my back out once before I put the plywood in where you know, I reached in to drag an ATA case and it stuck and I wasn't expecting it to and yep, tweaked my back. So prefer everything riding on wood. I had plans to paint it a high gloss white or uh, maybe spray in a bed liner. And uh, I've been using the van for four years now and I just, I got so busy working and it was functional that I stopped uh, with the uh, cosmetic buff out. One thing I learned with my first van, which is a 4250, is the, the window cutouts when it's solid metal Anywhere there's a window, it's a single layer of sheet metal. So just the slightest bump from a case, even a Pelican case, and it'll dent the exterior of the van. So it's important to plywood line all your window cutouts. And I did a better job on the interior. I used a quarter inch Luan. It bends a little bit better. And it's just sheet metal screws. And it was getting dark and I ran out of wood. So I switched to some uh, leftover ply. I think it's 3 8 inch for the rear windows. It's a little, it's a rough finish. And uh, then this was squeaking. The wood would chatter uh, drive when driving. So I put some caulking in here. And uh, it really should get another coat of paint to smooth it out. But eh, it's a work truck. No one's ever in the back. So it's more about functionality than beauty. If I'm on the road and staying at like a roadside motel type of thing, freeway side, which is fairly common for me. Uh, I installed shore power so I can plug all my batteries, chargers in the van, and then when I get to my little hotel room, I can just run a stinger to AC power at the facility. I find those little like motel type of facilities that cater to people on the road, they're very friendly about uh, letting you tap in, get a little AC, and that helps me in two ways. I don't have to think about lugging chargers into my hotel room, one. Two, I don't have to lie awake at night worrying about a battery charger catching on fire and burning the building down. And most importantly, in the morning, I won't leave the batteries behind in the hotel room. This is the end of 2019. And for me, the first quarter of each year is mostly airline travel work. So I'm thinking once I get on the road, I will make a new video on uh, how I switch over to flying with all of this equipment. I use the same van to get to and from the airport. I just switched to Pelican Air rollers. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if uh, there's some other little components you'd like to see. Putting these videos together to give back to the community and share some of this knowledge I've picked up over the last 20 years working in the field. Thanks for watching.